In a recent video, Tom Molody demonstrated how a Lucid Air can be fully charged on an Electrify America 350 kilowatt charging station, going from 0 to 100%. There had never been anything like it before, and it caused quite a commotion in the electric vehicle industry, with some people praising it and others being less than appreciative about the video. It was clear from the YouTube video and Twitter responses that the Air is a fantastic charging vehicle able to restore miles of range quicker than any other EV. However, YouTuber Warren Redlich utilized the footage to establish that the American automaker is lying and that their battery is far greater than the 118 kilowatt hour capacity they say. Are there any truths to Lucid being dishonest? Is it true that they have a battery with a capacity of more than 118 kilowatt hours? These are the questions that will be addressed in today's video. So, grab a drink of your choice and settle in for the ride. Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder that subscribing is free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar content. Comments are loved and featured in our upcoming videos. So, what's all the hoopla over Lucid inflating the size of its battery pack in the first place? Why was Tom Olony credited for 134 kilowatt hours of distributed energy at the charging station? In order to determine what caused the loss, let's look into it. Battery capacity discrepancies may lead to considerable losses when it comes to charging, since energy is wasted via a number of methods throughout the process. The gross quantity of energy that gets into the battery pack is what the infrastructure firms like Electrify America charge consumers. This includes the kilowatt-hour losses also. There will always be a difference between the build and actual amount because of losses, and this difference may range somewhere from 5 to 6 percent to 15 percent or more, depending on a number of circumstances. In both low-power alternating current charging and high-power direct current rapid charging, charging losses can be seen. Aside from the fact that AC charging has a lower rate of loss in real time, the cumulative effect may be even greater than that of DC fast charging. To emphasize the point, Lucid Air takes more electricity to charge than the majority of other electric cars on the road today. In addition to increased heat losses throughout the multiple parts involved in the charging process, from the charging station itself to the battery in the vehicle, higher power charging will also result in increased heat losses inside the car itself. For Lucid Air, Mr. Tom Molony calculated the energy loss based on the three elements that contributed to it – charging station losses, cooling during the charging process, and battery efficiency. The charging station heat dissipates around 3% of the energy used for DC fast charging, which is normal for charging at exceptionally high rates like those that the air can handle. Despite the fact that this energy never leaves the charging station, you're still required to pay for it, since it's an expense to the infrastructure firm. In addition to cooling the charger and wires, the station port losses might occur during AC to DC energy conversion at the charging station. This may add up to around 3%, and 3% 3 of 134 kilowatts, what we saw in Tom's bill, is approximately 4 kilowatt hours. Afterwards, around 4% of the energy delivered is required to keep the battery cold while it's being charged. While the charging process is underway, the compressor power, for example, may average 5 kilowatts. In general, the faster the speed of charging, the more heat is generated, and the battery and its components must be cooled down in order to avoid damage. All of this consumes around 4% of the provided energy, and 4% of 134 kilowatt hours is approximately 5.4 kilowatt hours. In addition, the battery's effectiveness is only approximately 95% while charging at high speeds. The energy wasted while charging and discharging in the battery pack accounts for about 5% of the difference between the input energy and the usable energy. Likewise, 5% of 134 kilowatt hours is about 6.7 kilowatt hours. The amount of heat created within the pack while fast charging is dependent on a number of parameters, including the charging current, the starting battery cell heat, and the resistance of the battery pack itself. The overall anticipated loss is around 15 kilowatt hours when you tally everything together. 
the 134 kilowatt hours of electricity that Tom Molyneux was charged for is reduced by 15 kilowatt hours, giving you 119 kilowatt hours of energy. This is only one more than Lucid says its battery pack can provide. If Lucid is correct about the air's battery capacity being 118 kilowatt hours, then the charging process suffered a loss of 16 kilowatts, or 13.5%, which is in line with what Tom's calculation anticipates from an EV charging at such a great tempo. On top of that, the Lucid modules at DreamPack are well shown in Mark Kane's presentations. The number of cells in each module and the number of modules in the Dream Pack are all clearly illustrated. It's time to sum up the slides. Each module has 300 cells. There's 22 modules. Type 2170 cells make up a total of 6,600 cells. The projected overall pack capacity would indeed be approximately 117 and 120 kilowatt hours based on the already available 2170 cell amp hour and nominal voltage specifications. As a result, 118 kilowatt hours from Lucid is a pretty acceptable figure. From the EPA filing of Tesla, this chart shows that the Model S Plaid has somewhat greater charging losses of 15% compared to the Lucid Air's 14%. If the official documentation for the Tesla Model S 99.3 kilowatt hour battery pack is valid, then the 118 kilowatt hour battery pack for the Air Dream Edition should be as well. Furthermore, the battery capacity of any electric vehicle is assessed based on the output that it produces rather than the input. As a result, just because your kilowatt hour charge shows 134, doesn't always imply that it contains a 134 kilowatt hour battery pack. Although many reviewers are likely to be nitpicking in order to take on a luxury startup, it's only a matter of time until an unbiased third party pulls Lucid apart and puts the problem to bed once and for all. I would like to hear what you think about the situation. Do you believe that Lucid as a manufacturing firm would purposely mislead the general public about its products? Or do you believe that naysayers just aren't ready to realize that Lucid has overcome its difficulties and has achieved a strong position in the market? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. In Sheikh Syed's opinion, the Saudi partnership is unquestionably superior than that of Ford to Lucid since the Saudis are very committed partners with strong financial viability as well as a large and affluent Middle East market into which the Air model may be successfully introduced. He admits that he is not a good investor, but he believes that the future of the company is bright and that the company will compete with Tesla sooner rather than later. This is his point of view. It's safe to assume that Lucid will be competing with Tesla in the future and Saeed is correct in his prediction. In order to succeed in the EV market, you must first compete against the finest in the industry. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing is still free and liking the video helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.